you can't beat this landscape look at all this stuff greens and purples and blues and oranges and blacks and reds and just the sickest rock formations wow all these seagulls and seabirds hanging out so beautiful here all right guys we got some super sicky planned today let me just start grabbing some of my stuff uh we're kind of going on an adventure that we planned on doing a while ago um we're gonna we do got some cilantro sweet. That's the only thing i just harvested some but you can actually grab some more there's some up in the uh, garden there awesome. anyway we are we're coast bound today it's like one of the good good days of nice weather and uh we got a couple cool things planned today we're gonna head out to florence area we're gonna pump some shrimp this morning at the low tide oh you're close yeah right yeah right there um we're gonna head to florence we're gonna go pump some shrimp pump some shrimp on the low tide and uh then we're gonna head north and just hit the rocks and see what we hook i mean we've never actually done this before but we know the, there's plentiful fish in the area i got a couple of spots up there i fish but i haven't done it for a while and we haven't done it together so yeah i mean i i actually there, okay I've, I've fished a little bit north of florence but there's one spot in particular that i have not fished yet that i've i've, I've been there since i was a kid and never tried it and there's actually a really cool cave there and stuff so um yeah we're gonna get after it we're loading up right now Ash showed up an hour early which is okay <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i'm just getting the coffee in me right now we're getting loaded up as you can see and uh i don't know maybe he's got some things to tell you <laughs> not really what up welcome to another adventure of the bite i'm asher ren i'm chris blanchard yeah yeah it was the monster i've been looking for Woo! <laughs> I'm Chris Blanchard. You're watching The Bite. So, we got this guy out here. We think he's pumping shrimp. He might be like the store supply. Dude, there's so many shrimp out. Look at this shit. Yeah, they're everywhere. Let's go say hi, or at least like watch him. We think he's pumping shrimp. He might be the store supply. Right? Dude, there's so many. You guys see all these uh, black dots everywhere? That's all shrimp and clams and all kinds of stuff. Got his pump running. Let's go watch him in action. Sell them to the, uh... I can't sell them to the public. No, but you sell them to all the stores yeah, and stuff? The stores, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. man. We kind of guessed that. It's pretty cool. Thing, I mean, if, unless you really want to pump, you can grab a few if you want to. I can't. Oh, no, we're going to go oh, pump we would, our own. We we're just to coming to see what you were up to. If you have a hard time. Just... Awesome, man. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, just sit down. Just watch out, for, <laughs> watch out for those holes, though. <laughs> well, have a good day, man. All right. Yeah, it looks like he's a. Uh, He's just using his hose right here. That's awesome. He's just pumping water in. If you guys ever do, do require, you know, large quantities, then I, then I might, you know, if you have a group of guys going and say, hey, I want 30, 40 dozen, 50 dozen. Yeah. That's hard to hand pump. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Makes for a long day. <laughs> We've got the broken. If you guys can, if you want, I mean, be out here. Yeah. yeah. It's way better than it is where we're Okay, at. we'll go. We'll, let's get up in there then. The, the softer the better. We just don't want to get in your little turf zone. No, I mean, you have high bumps. There's so much space out there. That's why I have to run this with the hose. Yeah, awesome. This thing, we got to get... Um, Mine. 
Mine? Mine? Fun little collection of shrimpies for bait. Look at the size of this beast right here. Look at that claw. Oh, look at that little crab. He's dead, but. Little little rock crab, jetty crab. Anyway, let's head north. Let's go catch some fish. guys we made it down here to the lighthouse parking lot the water is super low today there's a couple people out there just i don't know maybe they, they might be looking for clams or something but they're working on this bridge over here so it's pretty loud if you can't hear me right now but yeah we got our sand shrimp that we caught we're gonna go out on those rocks out there it's really good to uh, investigate structures during low tide because then you can see where the the deeper water is going to be um, but it's also pretty hairy you don't want to get trapped out on a certain spot so you got to keep your uh keep on point keep your wits about you so we're gonna get after it you mind if we fish here Huh? You mind if we fish right here? Oh. I mean, you can't beat this landscape. Look at all this stuff. Greens and purples and blues and oranges and blacks and reds and just the sickest rock formations. Good 40, 50 feet, 40 feet probably. Just the rocks. Nothing to rocks. Maybe you might get wet. <laughs> Wow. All these seagulls and seabirds hanging out. So beautiful here. This all used to be solid. Like this point right here, all of this used to be solid. Only, you know, whatever, five, ten years ago. This is the really? part like this with all the rocks and stuff. Just over the last few years. Thinking about it, like this, like rock could literally roll. All right. We got both yeah, sides. You know? This is all like those rocks and stuff. Just in the last year or two, fell. Right. This, this went to here. Really? Yeah. I haven't been here in a, in a couple of years, but this was definitely was filled in right here. Like, so, just another reason to be on point out here. The ever changing fishery super crazy spot lighthouse is just above us you can just see the top of it right above all those uh seagulls and west gulls and cormorants and look at this gorgeous little inlet in between this valley of just coastal steep terrain it's amazing and we got two pretty deep pockets on either side so we're about to fish them yeah, yeah.
think maybe it's a little bit too shallow here. Just with the tide still so low. And that maybe we should just head north for a bit. Look at these slots. They're kind of shallow though. Yeah, the trail's through the Hobbit that way. What a view. I'm coming in hot behind you. You can't ever tell how steep it actually is in these cameras, you guys, but this is pretty steep. <laughs> oh. Opens up to a bunch of nice little slots, though. It's beautiful down here. All right, so we're down here. I don't even know what this spot is called because it's pretty much secret. I mean, I'm sure a couple of you are going to recognize it. Get down here. Check out this cave. Boom. <laughs> right? It's pretty sick. You could camp in here. Not not on a uh, not on a stormy day, but I've seen the water up in here before. But this really cool cave. I guess uh, it's not as tall as I remember it, but let's see how far back it goes these days. I haven't been here in a few years. Echo! This is super dope. Look, some even brought wood. One day we should... You will see us camp here one day. Look at that, that is so cool. But you don't want to do... Uh, a real nasty high tide stormy day because I'll bet the water splashes up in here and you won't be able to get out and yeah let's go with the back it goes pretty far back now let's see if I get a flashlight Slowly sliding out, making a bigger cave. Wild. Yeah. Definitely worth the stop. But it's definitely fishable too, but I think the tide's just too low right now and we're trying to get up higher north to uh, get to this certain spot that's gonna be primo at high tide. But there's some good little channels and stuff down here. Just a cool shot through the camera with the glowing cave hole. All right guys, we're just down here exploring. 
Checking out the tide pools, all the life that's going on down here. There's so many little nooks and crannies everywhere. You can be. It's super cool. They, you can hunt all day long. And they've all got these different little ecosystems. Like look down here. See how there's this pool kind of drops down into that next little pool, which runs all the way down into that next one. And right here, we've got this gravel bed that runs all the way up to these pools. These pools right here have like a totally different like uh, type of life and seaweed. Yeah, and ecosystems. Yeah, uh, ecosystem. They're all full of algae and stuff. And like, they're not, there's probably some similar life. That's probably have, all like, a wave spray. different ecosystem, yeah, than those ones do down there. It's not loading very fast, so. I can't see, like look, this part right here, nice and crisp. Coastline, blurry. go gear up with our get our waders on and stuff like that and check out what we're gonna do we might hit the south side might hit the north side so i think we're gonna jetty fish this afternoon and hit the high tide on the jetty there's been a lot of lean cod caught down here a lot of nice rock fish so stick with us all right here we go out to the end dude it all looks good like it's barely even moving so weather is great right now no wind and uh Tide's still coming in right now. Well guys, we finally got out here to the jetty. We're on the south jetty in Newport, and we're just throwing swim baits and bottom, bottom bouncing some bait, and we're gonna try to get into a fish so we can turn it into lunch. Yeah. Beautiful day out here. I know it's not all sunny and beach going hot, but as far as jetty fishing, it doesn't get much better than this. Big sea lion popping up right there. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. Come on, ceviche. Greenling. Decent one. Finally. That's a good looking fish. Got some really cool colors. Should we eat this one? Is this lunch? Looks like a uh, ceviche fish to me. Greenling, man, they come in all kinds of colors. This one's super dark, actually, I like it. Yeah. Let's get him up there, we're gonna eat him for sure. I just caught, whoa, whoa, just caught him on my pole. Look, his face is all covered in sand shrimp and he's been going hard on it. Um, even these little, these little claws on a red rock like this could just smash my finger. These claws are so strong, it's kind of unbelievable. Um, Red rock crabs are uh, legal to keep any size, any quantity. This one is a male. He's a little bit small though, and we don't really have the ability to process crab right now. And I don't want to deal with hauling around all day, so we're gonna let him go. But cool little, cool little crab, right? Fun stuff. Yeah, they're great eating. Their claws are super sweet. They're really, really good. Woo. Bye, bud. So we're just trying to catch one more fish for lunch. There's gotta be another fish down there, right? There's gotta be a couple, maybe. But so far the bite's been slow. Definitely a uh, different color greenling though. He's got a lot of yellows on him. A little kelp greenling probably. Pretty little fish. He's just a baby. He's too small. Yeah, we're gonna let, whoop, we're gonna let him go. Boop. Asher's on, I just missed the hookup. But this is gonna be, if it stays on, it's gonna be our lunch fish. Nice, it's a quill back. That's a better lunch fish. That is a quill back, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Not a copper because it's got these huge tops, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, the copper don't have that big, those big quills. Look at that beautiful fish right there. I'm real happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead. Whoa, the hook's already out, dude. It wasn't even hooked. It was wow. just like in his mouth. Like I pulled him up from tension. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get this fish knocked out and turned into ceviche ASAP because we all know what happens <laughs> when I try to uh, play with fish down by the water. See that thing. It's got this cool little ballpoint hammer. It's really easy. It slips in the bag. It's a nice way to just 
you know, put a fish out if you want to put a fish out. But how beautiful is that? Look at these cool spikes on its gill column and this amazing, these amazing quills off the top. That's just awesome. And Dude. that's a beautiful, beautiful fish. That's nice fish. Yeah. We're gonna need the shit out of it. Yes, we are. <laughs> All right, so I just tied on this here rattle trap. I don't know you guys probably saw on another episode that we just slayed it at night. Uh, the water's not very deep here, so I'm kind of hoping that uh, running this thing through, maybe it'll entice some rock bass or some, uh, you know, even a quill back too, I bet. But it's on the lighter line, which it's kind of dangerous to do, but here we go. Maybe a black rock bass. I'll let that sink far. The old rattle trap. Yeah, that rattle trap is awesome on the Ooh. Nice little rock bass. Decent fish. Second one, we go out, we do a bunch of night fishing, and Chris is just slaying yeah, fish on this like rattle trap. On that, that um, it's it's probably a confirmed uh, killer now that he just yeah, smashed daytime. into that. Couldn't get into any fish. You put that on, smash into this one. So, Woo. yeah, yeah. You guys want to know the secret to smashing black rockfish on the jetty? If you can't catch them on anything the else, work. throw on one of these. Exactly. Beautiful. I think we're gonna be getting out of here real quick. We're gonna go cook some uh, ceviche with our fresh fish we got. And I'll tell you more here in a little while. All right guys, so today we're gonna rock out um, what's kind of a catch and cook. It's more of a catch and burn, cook, prepare thing. Um, we're making ceviche. And with ceviche, you don't actually cook your fish, you soak it in lime juice, and the acid of this lime juice gives the fish like a chemical burn, and it really does fully cook it. It'll um, lose its translucence, and it will become like a nice solid little white piece of fish. So, I've got some lime juice. This is fresh lime juice that I squeezed last night. And then I've got some cilantro, because the market was out of cilantro. So we grabbed it on our way up today, and we just got to do a little bit of cilantro chopping. It doesn't really need very much. I'm just going to cut the top of that right off, throw this bag back in the cooler. And then what I have in here is kind of a souped up pico de gallo type mix. I've got white onions, I've got um, a little bit of red onion even, and some green onions. So we've got all the onions in there. I've got green and red bell peppers in here. We've got some garlic. Um, some mango, some corn, a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of cumin, and a little bit of salt and pepper. And it is basically just a fire, fire salsa. So all you gotta do for ceviche is get yourself a nice fire salsa, get yourself some fish, soak that fish in lime juice, combine the two, and you are good to go. So I'm just gonna chop this cilantro up. Just enough so that it'll blend into that salsa in a good way and not be too big and obnoxious of leaves to uh, fiddle and chip. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that right in there and we'll mix that all in good when we mix our fish in. So I'm going to just set this aside for a minute. And now, We've got to process our fish. So I'm just going to clean these fish real quick. I don't know if you guys have ever cleaned a black rock bass or watched us on this channel show you how to clean a black rock bass. There's a couple of different ways to go about it. I'm not really going to do the full breakdown right now because this is a ceviche video, not a filleting video. But if you'd like to see a filleting video, holler at us in the comments, bug us enough, and we'll release any of the dozen that we filmed because we filmed quite a few fish filleting videos and it seems like most of them have not made it out yet. Another thing I'm going to note is that 
all of my good knives didn't make it. <laughs> it was either this big white kitchen knife or a serrated bread knife to try to fillet this fish. So I'm gonna use this big ghetto kitchen knife, but it's gonna work because I got skills. All of our meat is gonna get turned in to little tiny pieces of fish. So a little piece like that, like if you leave some on your body while you're doing this, don't worry about it at all. It's all gonna get turned into little tiny square chunks. So you don't really need to keep a nice pretty fillet as it comes off the fish. So one piece of how to fillet a fish information I can give you is to always try to do it with a sharp knife because if you have a dull knife, it's gonna make filleting your fish way harder, way more obnoxious, and way uglier of a fillet when it comes off. You're gonna get something that looks like that as opposed to just a nice beautiful slab of meat. Like see all these, all these extra chunks of fish I just left. I am gonna just pry them off though and we're gonna wash all this stuff off in a minute and all these little pieces of meat, like you can really, like all of that is, is perfect for ceviche. So like there's no, you know, don't, don't be, if you're making ceviche, don't be worried that you left some meat on the fish and you know, carve all that right off of there. So, and again, I'm brutalizing this filet because this knife is just so dull, but I'm gonna get the job done and we're gonna be eating food here in a minute on the water. How do you define success? That smell right there, that's not the smell of fish guts and sea mist and squid juice and shrimp juice. That smell right there is the smell of victory. I'm just gonna try to come in here and get some of those pieces out and still have those for our ceviche because that's all good meat right there and we don't wanna lose any of that meat. We don't wanna waste any of this fish. If you're just joining us, <laughs> we're making some ceviche. It's a, uh, a catch and no cook, but we're still gonna process this fish down. I wonder what the definition of cooking is. Does heat have to be applied? Is it, is it cooking if it's done with chemicals? Are we still gonna cook this fish, just we're gonna cook it in a lime juice chemical bath? The idea of chemical burn does not sound very appetizing or appealing. <laughs> it's not the first thing I think of it when I hear the word chemical burn or the phrase chemical burn is not mmm delicious. But that is what we're gonna do with the lime juice. We're gonna use the acid in the lime juice to give this fish a chemical burn. You can make ceviche with pretty much any kind of fish, but freshwater fish have a tendency to carry parasites. So you wanna be real careful if you're gonna consume anything that you know has a high likelihood of um, having parasites in it because parasites can be really bad for you. And freshwater fish have a much higher concentration of parasites. There's actually very few um, parasites that can survive in saltwater and can plague saltwater fish. You get worms and some sea lice and some other stuff like that. Um, but parasites are a little bit different. And I don't really know enough about how the lime juice interacts with um, parasites to feel super comfortable that it just completely removes them from uh, risk. So I usually don't make ceviche with uh, freshwater fish. I usually save it for um, straight seafoods. So these fillets are real roughed up. We're gonna wash them off uh, when we're done. So I'm not too worried about some little bits of scale and um, dirt and stuff like that getting on them. I think traditionally, or originally maybe I should say, um, ceviche is a Peruvian dish and that um, they do a lot of things. They'll cook um, everything from potatoes to um, seafood, of course, but um, you know, everything. You can find yourself chicken ceviche if you go look around on the streets. All right, you guys, so we just finished filleting up our fish and I'm just cleaning the fillets off a little bit right now because we want them to be nice and ready to go into our mix. So. After that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just chop it up into relatively small cubes. You don't want your pieces to be too big or the lime juice won't really have an opportunity to penetrate 
into the meat. You know, depending on the ceviche you're making, if you were gonna try to cook some squid or octopus or shrimp or something like that in the lime juice, I would say give it a good soak. Let it soak for, you know, up to a couple of hours, up to 24 hours, something like that. But all of this saltwater fish that we have, pretty much every single fish that lives in the saltwater off of the Oregon coast, you can eat as sushi. There's a couple of fish that have some um, poisonous tendencies, kind of like you hear about a uh, blowfish or a lionfish or something like that. But if they're um, properly cut up and prepared, their meat is actually totally safe to eat um, completely raw. What we're doing is almost a weird version of mock cheating ceviche because while we do want all this fish to cook, it's gonna make it taste better, it's gonna really make it pop and have this um, amazing texture in that lime juice, we could actually just mix this raw fish straight into our salsa and eat it because it's all sushi grade. At the same time, eating two pounds of raw fish filet in a setting is not really, um, you know, hitting up a couple of nice rolls of sushi at your local sushi bar. So I don't recommend just sitting down and eating whole fillets of raw fish. Although I've done it and you could do it. And if you're out here and you were hungry and you were stuck on the jetty and you caught one of these things, yeah, dude, just throw it in your mouth and eat. Throw the whole thing in your mouth and eat it. <laughs> so you guys, I'm just chopping up this fish a little bit and I'm gonna get it into our lime juice. And it's only gonna take maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes for this fish to already start to um, be what is obviously cooked fish. It's gonna lose its translucence and it's going to turn into little white chunks of beautiful bomb cooked fish. Traditional ceviches have lots of different base ingredients, but you'll probably find um, some cilantro and some tomatoes and some onions, um, some of your like pico de gallo salsa mix and most different ceviches that you get. Although you will find some that are super sweet and fruity and are like mostly fruit. I've had some plantain ceviche. I've had some different fruit ceviches that were really good. I had an octopus ceviche in Panama City that was mind blowing. It was just so, so good. Little old lady walking down the street with a five gallon bucket full of chopped up octopus soaking in lime juice in the middle of a blazing hot day. And I was real skeptical. My local friend came up to me and told me it was the best ceviche in the world. So I got some and it was un it was unbelievable. It was it was just so fire. And she put little bits of pineapple in hers and something about that extra little pineapple, it made it kick kind of like a pineapple salsa. And I really like a little sweetness to my salsa, a pineapple salsa or a mango salsa. Um, and so I added some mango to today's. I think that that little bit of sweet brings away from how um, strong the bite of lime juice and then onions and peppers and all the other stuff that's in there that's all pretty um you know pretty snappy food so we're just getting to uh finishing chopping up the last little bits of our fish here and we're going to throw it into this lime juice to soak and we're just going to give this 10 15 minutes this fish is so fresh that we could eat it right now. So I'm um, not really too worried about making sure the lime juice cooks it enough, but we're gonna let it soak in there so that it can um, do its thing. And then we're gonna add it to our pico mix and it's going to be amazing. So, yeah. 20 minutes later. All right guys, so as you can see, our fish is started to turn white in all the right places. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of this out of here. And if you look at this, which is okay though, because this raw fish is fine to eat, but it's just kind of wild to see like, look, cooked, if you spread it open a bit, you can see right in there in the center, a little bit of raw fish, just like this has been, um, you know, just cooked a little, a little bit rare. All the outside right there is cooked, but you peel it open a little bit and there's just a little bit of raw fish in there. So if we let this soak for an hour, maybe two, it would definitely all turn into completely cooked all the way through hard little white chunks. But we're gonna go ahead and mix it into the rest of our ceviche right now. Just dump all this fish in there and it's gonna keep cooking. Um, there's a decent bit of acid inside of the juice of the onions and the garlic and all the other stuff in there um, permeating together is also gonna help cook this a little bit, but the lime juice is really 
gonna do most of your heavy lifting. Let's crack them chips and eat some ceviche. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that, look how beautiful that is. That's just, you take the honor as you crack it open. All right. Nice big scooping chip. It's amazing. It really is just absolutely delicious, you guys. It is so good. All the goodness of some zesty salsa with some fresh fish right up in the center of it. It's amazing. Wow. I think it's just better because we just caught this. Literally, we just, a half hour ago, these fish were bonked out. Right, yeah, two hours ago, these fish were alive. And now here we are. In the ocean, right back there. Feasting. We might get into a little bit more fishing today. You know, it's not dark yet. We're still breathing. Good chance we'll fish a little bit more today. But probably wrapped up most of the uh, most of the rock fishing off of the jetty trip. We're gonna probably down a bunch of this ceviche and then uh, see where life takes us. Maybe south a little bit, maybe north a little bit. If you guys wanna see us do more stuff, like make ceviche on the side of the river, more ch catch and cooks, more food. We really need to get some camera upgrades. And I'm not asking you to give us any money. I don't need you to go to Patreon and support us there. I don't need you to do any of that stuff. If you like the video and you hit subscribe down below, it's gonna cause us to get to our goals quicker, which is gonna let us help share what we do with you quicker. So hit the like button. Hit the sub button. All the uh, support is so much appreciated. And uh, can't thank you guys enough. I'm so thankful for this food and for you guys and the fish that we caught today. It's like. So you guys, what would you like to see us do on the channel? Is there any kind of fish you really want to see us catch that you know can be found in the Oregon area that you haven't seen us catch yet? Is some musky. kind of food that you're interested <laughs> in? Tiger muskies are on the list. We're gonna go do that soon. That'll be really, really fun. Bet you didn't know there were tiger muskies in Oregon. Now you do. Hmm. I think it'd be fun to get out here and get into some shark. Yep. There's definitely a large population of shark off the Oregon coast, but nobody out here fishes for them. Um, which is interesting because of how popular the shark fishery is in some parts of the world. But we'll get into them. Definitely walleye on the menu. We got quite a menu actually. We're gonna be going to get lake trout soon. Kokanee lake trout trip coming up. Uh huh. And you know what's funny, you guys, is there's a couple of real healthy walleye fisheries in Oregon where we could go up and catch walleye like tomorrow. You know, we drive up there, catch walleye. But that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to this lake that we know about. It's pretty close to our home that we here have walleye in it but people don't catch them that often anymore, but they catch big ones, you know, 25, 26 um, plus inch fish. And um, apparently they're still pretty abundant when you can find them. You find the right little bay, you find the right little area, you're into five, 10 pound fish all day long. We're gonna start doing some good stuff, probably launch a, uh, a youth outdoor channel at some point. We have a lot of um, children in our lives. I've got a niece and a nephew. Chris has two kids. Most of our friends have kids now. I guess we're all getting to that age. And it just kind of makes sense that um, if we're gonna pass the torch, we're gonna teach the next generation, we're gonna teach these kids how to fish responsibly and sustainably, that, um, you know, why not add that to the channel too? Or create a whole new channel even for that specifically. So stay tuned. We'll probably make some announcements like that at some point and more food too. More food, lots more food. Lots more food. Like once a week, like real cooker, cookery kind of sh uh, episodes. Full on meal deal. Wow, this ceviche is just amazing, you guys. It's almost as amazing as the fact that we just hit 500 subscribers yesterday. We're Thank super stoked on it. Thank you so much for all the support. 500 is pretty small. We're still a startup channel, but 500 is a stepping stone. We're on our way to a thousand to a hundred thousand on to a million. So we're looking forward to that. We're going to do a big giveaway 
um, when we hit a thousand subscribers, uh, probably some fishing gear, uh, maybe some custom fits. We've got some merch um, coming out, some the bite merch. So keep your eyes out for that stuff. So yeah, just let us know what you guys might like to see from the channel. We're happy to um, to uh, capitulate. If you say we want more stripers, we'll spend more time catching stripers. I know you guys really love the stripers. If you want to see us to get into some big trout, some trout that are more impressive than the trout you've seen us catching so far, maybe a big lake or one of those real big browns, something like that, let us know. Any kind of information you give us about what you want to see from the channel, we will produce. We will create it. We will find those fish and uh, we will make it happen. So, Or maybe you guys want to like go head to head. You know, I said something about Asher being the best saltwater angler. I got you know, $50. If you, want out, if you want to call him out. I got $50 right now that says this kid right here can beat any of you on your home local stream throwing spinners for steelhead. I, I would be I would be just absolutely impressed if there's a person in the country that can put steelhead onto spinners the way Damn. this guy can right He's here. He's putting me under so, the bus right now. I am. I'm throwing him under the bus straight Holy up. Holy so. cow. Yeah, bring it, boys. Tune in next week. We've been crushing them.